Okay, going to be taking a look at the Lucas 12 volt dynamo and how it's wired to the regulator box for make doing main one. I uh, had this running off of the LD1 yesterday for the first time in quite a long time. Haven't actually managed to get this dynamo to work properly since taking it off of the Briggs and Stratton generator set. Um, got tired of it just being mounted to one engine permanently so we decided to take it off so we could run it off of anything. That was the idea but it uh, was a bit of a bugger to wire up. But we did finally get it working a couple of days ago so we're just going to talk through how it's wired up now. On the uh, dynamo, this one isn't marked. Some dynamos are marked with the letters but this one isn't. This is the D terminal, this is the F terminal for the field windings. Uh, in some cases they're marked, in this case they're not. Um, on the regulator box here we have D and F. That's D and that is F down there. So our D terminal from the dynamo, which is this wire here, runs to the D terminal on the regulator box. And then the F terminal from the dynamo, which is here, runs to the corresponding F terminal on the regulator box. So that's those two wires from the dynamo. No more wires come from the dynamo. That is it. Um, we have our negative here. Well, I believe it's the negative anyway. Seems to be. And that runs from E on the regulator box here to the mounting bracket of the dynamo. Then we run our negative from the opposite side of the dynamo mounting bracket. I'm not sure if that makes any difference to have it connected straight to this one or to the opposite side, I don't know. I just mounted it to the opposite side. And our negative comes from the dynamo bracket then to my control panel down here with the voltmeter on it. And then from our control panel here, we can run whatever we, we want, 12 volt wise. So lights, anything like that. And our positive lead isn't connected to the dynamo anywhere, I've just got it running underneath the dynamo. That comes from A, terminal A on the regulator box, so down here, and that runs to the positive wire of our control panel here. So uh, hopefully that helps. I uh, don't need a battery to give it a kick-starting jolt to get it generating. I uh, usually just have to give the engine a little rev after connecting it up, after belting it to the engine usually just have to give it a quick sharp rev and uh, the dynamo usually start generating on its own I've never actually had to connect a battery to it to get it to generate power yeah, that's ok good. so we can see it working off the old scrap stuff it got 12 volt dynamo's wired up just as I showed it didn't need a battery to kick start it at all. Just running off the old stuff. It's probably doing about, I don't know, it's probably doing about a thousand odd RPM. Haven't got the belt too tight because the old stuff is underperforming a little bit. So we're actually on about eight odd volts at the moment, but that's fine. Shows that Dynamo's working. Anyway, it proves that the whole thing does work, so just wire it up like that, providing the dynamo is good and the regulator box is good, should work. There are a couple of tests that you can do on the dynamo. First of all, if you manage to work out which one is the positive and the negative, it doesn't really matter. You can uh, connect it to a battery and if the dynamo is good, it could act as a motor. Obviously, if you uh, connect the negative and the positive up wrong you will reverse the polarity of the dynamo and it's spinning the wrong way which we get an edge generated in the wrong direction so do try and work out which way is the positive first yeah it's working well though uh, you can also test it with a multimeter you can test the field windings for resistance I can't remember the readings I got from this one, but they were right. The regulator box, just make sure the contacts are clean inside and out and you should be fine. That's yeah, working quite nicely, that. Even off of a small engine, 
Hasn't got to be belting along either. Hasn't got to be going that quick. Only thing I have done on this dynamo is swap the pulley for a smaller one. On these old Lucas dynamos, you can take the pulley off, but keep the fan on, and then you can just switch any pulley. So this is uh, the two halves of the pulley from the inside of a self-propelled mechanism for a soccer lawnmower. That's all that is. Just have to enlarge the holes, fold it up, and it's fine. Gives me a little bit more speed on the dynamo so the engine can run a little bit slower. But we haven't exactly got fantastic belt tension there. And uh, we're still getting a good steady 8-odd roll. If I increase the belt tension, the stuff could die. But uh, still not running quite right, that engine. Let's find out it is. Yeah, probably just gonna let this stuff carry on until it dies. So it runs out of fuel. Quite enjoying the setup. Yep. Well, actually, it just did die. I had a funny feeling it would come to a bitter end like that. I'm pretty sure it's just blowing the head gasket. We had a problem with this yesterday. It'll all be explained in the next video here. It has just blown the head gasket. <laughs> it will be explained in a follow up video from this with the old uh, Suffolk. We tear that apart and have a look at it, and uh, yeah, something bad happened. Alright, anyway, should be fine now. The dynamo is working well. We'll see if we can coax the old Suffolk back into life, but I doubt it. <laughs> anyway, there we go. Thanks for watching.